Black women's reproductive health care needs are pervasively unmet within the United States, and I would argue worldwide due to one main reason. I'll share that reason with you in a moment, as well as one feasible step in the right direction. But first, let me provide a bit of context. Within the United States, women's reproductive health is typically discussed in the vacuum of fertility versus infertility. The health of the individual reproductive organs and systems are discussed in tandem with how much they will or will not aid in pregnancy. Now, don't get me wrong, that's important. Fertility in general is super important, but the health of the female reproductive system is a standalone concept. The overall well-being of the vagina, the ovaries, the uterus, the endocrine system, and so on, deserve to be well inside of the body of a woman without fertility being used as justification. More conversations surrounding this need to take place. When we hone in on Black women's reproductive health, the conversation needs to be even more complex. For example, did you know that Black women are diagnosed with uterine fibroids at a younger age and experience more severe and persistent symptoms? Black women experience all of these coupled with undergoing hysterectomies at two and a half times the rate of other racial and ethnic groups in order to combat their uterine fibroids. This is the case despite there being feasible, minimally invasive, uterine-preserving procedures available that effectively treat the unique presentation of fibroids which are commonly found among Black women. Why is this? We can discuss inequity within the healthcare system, the severe lack of adequate insurance coverage, the justified mistrust in the medical system and healthcare professionals, or the arguably unethical costs associated with uterine preserving versus uterine destroying treatment methods. All of these factors are significant and provide pieces of the puzzle, but there's still one link missing to properly addressing the reproductive healthcare needs of Black women. To appropriately describe this missing link, let's discuss Dr. Kimberlay Crenshaw's intersectionality theory for a minute. According to Dr. Crenshaw, intersectionality is a term that provides us with a lens for seeing the way in which various forms of inequality often operate together and exacerbate one another. We tend to talk about race inequality as separate from inequality based on gender, class, or sexuality. What's often absent is how some people are subject to all of these and the experience is not just the sum of its parts. Rather, this interconnectedness creates a convergence of identity. So it would only be appropriate to discuss the collective impact of racial and gender inequality as it relates to the state of Black women's reproductive health. The bodies of Black women have simultaneously been used in the medical field to unethically advance science and dehumanize the women that own them. We have seen this manifested in the countless stories of healthcare providers disregarding Black women's physical pain, which more often than not is the physical side effect of serious medical complications. Like when world-renowned tennis player Serena Williams, who had a well-documented history of pulmonary embolisms, told her healthcare team that she had extreme chest pain and difficulty breathing after giving birth to her daughter. Her pain was dismissed. Only after advocating for herself, her healthcare team seriously looked into her concerns where they found multiple blood clots lodged in her lungs. She experienced coughs so painful and frequent that the wound from her C-section ruptured. Stories like these are not uncommon, unfortunately. The literature shows that white lay people and healthcare professionals alike hold false beliefs of BIPOC individuals' pain tolerance. This racial bias and pain perception is associated with racial bias and pain treatment recommendations, which we saw exemplified with Serena Williams. This brings me back to the initial question, what is the missing link to Black women's reproductive health? My answer to that is culturally representative, appropriate and tailored care being the standard for Black women. Care that places the unique lived experiences of Black women at the forefront. For some, this seems obvious. For others, not so much. Let's unpack this a bit further. Scholars have found that when BIPOC patients worked with BIPOC physicians, there was an increase in trust and communication. Patients experienced significant, le significantly less bias, higher quality care, and there is typically an increase in treatment compliance and patient satisfaction. 
ultimately resulting in better health for BIPOC patients. So when Black women have healthcare providers that look like them, provide care that meets the needs of their convergent identity, and is rooted in respect, their overall reproductive health benefits. Realistically, the systematic change needed to effectively address the severe lack of culturally representative, appropriate, and tailored care will take time. So where does this leave Black women and their reproductive health and healthcare now? One way to put the power back in the hands of Black women is through the adoption of Sister Circles, a sacred space curated by and for Black women. A space in the community where Black women can explicitly and unapologetically acknowledge and consider the layered impact of everyday racism and sexism on their well-being. These spaces are beneficial for Black women in a number of ways. In the interest of time, I will share two with you. First, these sacred spaces inherently provide a space for Black women to engage in collective coping, which has been shown to improve mental and physical well-being among people of color. These spaces allow Black women to share their full range of emotions related to absolutely anything, including their reproductive health and healthcare experiences. One woman expressed that she almost felt out of place when she went to see her doctor, who at the time made her feel like she didn't know her body and that her condition was the end all be all. She went on to say that it wasn't until she found her tribe of sacred sisters that she realized that she wasn't alone in her feelings. These spaces also serve as a mechanism for building self-efficacy and autonomy. Another woman reported that it helped her make the connection between mind, body, and spirit deeper and encouraged her to take responsibility for things that she didn't realize she had any influence over in terms of her reproductive health. She started making decisions for her long-term benefit. In these sacred spaces, women can share an endless amount of resources with one another that they might not have otherwise known about. This can include information pertaining to healthcare providers, management routines, treatment options, and coping mechanisms, just to name a few. While the world continues to shift, and these systems of racism and oppression continue to be challenged for the better, I encourage Black women to seek a community of women that they can grow with. These sacred spaces do not and cannot look the exact same in every community. The women that will make up the circle come from differing backgrounds and experiences and have different needs. This is what makes the space so sacred. Black women being able to show up authentically and just be. To give and receive healing. Healing that is so vital for reproductive health.